Good afternoon. You join us at the Adventist Youth Congress, the European Adventist Youth Congress 2022. It's Sabbath afternoon. We've had a wonderful morning where youngsters were baptized, gave their hearts to the Lord. We've had a wonderful week, and we're going to consider that in a few moments. But behind me, you can see uh, youth enjoying a Sabbath afternoon recreation, just mingling with each other and just having a wonderful time as we come to the last few hours of uh, the Co Youth Congress with me in a short roundtable discussion about Congress and some of the issues it raises is Pastor Ima Helmanen, who is the president of the Finnish Union of Churches and the host country for Congress 22. Pastor Robert Durard, who is the Netherlands Union of Churches president. And Pastor Ian Sweeney, who is the former British Union president uh, in my home country of England and Ireland, Scotland and Wales. And is, uh, I've invited him here because Pastor Eglin Brooks, the British Union president, the current president, is unable to be with us here at Congress. So I thought here, you know, here is uh, Pastor Sweeney who's been through the story of what it means to lead the church. And I've invited you around this table because you are the leaders of the church in your respective fields. And we can talk about youth ministries until kingdom come. But you know, the people who are the driving force of the agenda in a constituency are the presidents. And so, so first of all, I want to ask you, Ima, uh, how's it been, the host country hosting this Congress? How did you feel about it? Well, I feel very good about it. Uh, eventually, this could happen. It wasn't uh, uh, clear till a couple of months ago that this uh, event would be actually organized. But uh, then they decided, well, we are definitely going to do it. And uh, we are so happy that 2,300 or so uh, young people came to Finland and enjoyed this wonderful atmosphere here and good venue and uh, beautiful uh, location by, in the city of Lahti by lake. And the speakers and the presentation and the worship experience? <clears throat> that has been especially wonderful. I myself have enjoyed it and, uh, and the band and the worship uh, band has been excellent, the Finnish band and I'm proud of those young people who have uh, represented Finland very well and uh, speakers and uh, workshops. What I've heard, uh, very good positive uh, impact on, on young people. Amen. Thank you. Rob? Yes, uh, I, I do heartily agree with him, although I'm jealous that this event did, that didn't take place in the Netherlands. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were in the race, but Finland uh, won. won. Well. <laughs> uh, because of cost, of course, but uh, no, it has been a wonderful week. Uh, I've been uh, I've been present five years ago in Valencia, and uh, and uh, I wanted to be here for this week, and it has been a very good week, I think. I really enjoyed uh, the speakers. I enjoyed the music. It's the music that touches the heart, yeah. you know. Okay. I mean, personally, I'm pretty rational. Yeah. But it's the music that uh, that moves you, and uh, and it's been very good. I like the energy of the young people, mm -hmm. and that fills the room, and that's great to be part of that. So, Thank you, Amen. As all of us are a little bit older, as you. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting you said that that um, as a church leader, music stirs you. That's what gets you right there. Yeah. 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 And and words put to music uh, as a, as a, as a real worship experience. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. May I come back to that. Ian, I think for me one of the, the the highlight. I think I agree with you know what my colleagues have said. But for me, the highlight was actually the small groups in the morning, mm -hmm. following the the morning mm -hmm. service. And mm -hmm. you know, many of our viewers might not be aware. You know, I'm used to being fed from the front. You know, mm -hmm. you have a sermon, you say amen, yeah, that was good, and you go away. But it, the program was purposely designed. So you had a very, sh it was a short message, very thought provoking. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for the 2000 people, they were all assigned small groups. Mm -hmm. You know, I forget, over 200 small groups. Yeah. And it afforded an opportunity not to say whether the sermon was good or bad, that was irrelevant, but actually to reflect, to pray, to meet folk from different parts. And, 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 and it brought us out of, from one, you know, out of our comfort zones to actually engage. And it was really, really wonderful. And, you know, I was fortunate to be a, one of the leaders um, of a small group. And the six folk who were in my group, you know, 
friendships and exploration of faith. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. That, mm -hmm. for me, was the highlight. Music, fantastic. Fellowship, all of that was great. But I really loved the small groups. So that leads me into my sort of second question to you about what happens after Congress. You know, we, we, we went to Congress as youngsters. I, went, yeah. I was at uh, um, Exeter and I was at Aarhus and some of those Congresses in times past. And you'd go home on a high. It was a real high. And after a while, it became a memory. What can we do to help these youngsters not just stay on, a, on, a, on an artificial emotional high, but a spiritual high, a, 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 a spiritual level which is consistent, passionate, engaged for Christ. Imo. Well, I believe that uh, there is uh, much we can do to support the youth work in our unions and uh, try to, to help them to create similar elements in uh, in. Uh, in, in our local settings. It's not always easy. You don't have that uh, wonderful bands always. Of course, we do have that band in Finland, but, but I mean, because it has been practicing for this event and, and there are music all around, but not in the small churches. Mm. But uh, I think we can also, through media, create more common ground. Media has uh, played an important role here and, uh, and young people are very used to social media and YouTube and all these channels. And uh, we have to create uh, some uh, content there uh, as a church and build platforms for young people who live far away from each other sometimes. And they don't have that all these things in the local church. But we can connect through media uh, nowadays much better, especially COVID has uh, taught. Uh, good lessons about how can we also connect when it is physically sometimes even impossible. So in one sense, the COVID uh, outcome was that we can connect almost to anybody anywhere yes. for group discussion, conversation, yes. Yes. Bible study. In fact, you can, in theory... Sharing, witnessing and sharing, you know, live YouTube videos, whatever and interviewing each other, you know, and then sharing it to, to, to others almost everywhere in Europe. It's not beyond the imagination that that small group that you were involved in a few days ago could continue to be a small group exactly. on Zoom yes. exactly. in perpetuity, if they, exactly. if they so wish. Exactly. Yes. That would yes. be marvellous, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. That exactly. really would. Exactly. Yeah. And a number of phone numbers and emails were exchanged in the small groups. I lots know of contacts, lots of new friendship, yeah. uh, you know, across the you know borders, you know, different countries and people mix here very well. Activities and uh, lounge here, and you know, people interact. Indeed, Rob. Yes, uh, it's good to praise all the the good things about uh, <laughs> about the te technical support we have to to stay in touch. But I think one of the highlights of these events, as we have experienced here this week, they, they are the highlights of, of the uh, young people as they experienced it. Yeah. Uh, they, they meet, but they make new friends. They, they, the, the messages are tremendous. The preaching is really good on a high level. The music is good. So these, these, these are a spiritual high. Um, and these events are very, very important in the spiritual life of young people. A lot of young people, they make decisions for mm. Christ. Mm. Uh, we saw a baptism this morning, it was great to have 12 young people, but a lot of people make the decision yes. to follow Christ, yeah. even though they're not baptized today, but mm -hmm. they will be in yeah. the future because yeah. an event like this changes the direction in yes. their lives. Yes. Uh, but we can't recreate it on a no. national level or no. on a local level. Or in the local church, yes. yes. But I think what, what is really important is, is, is a relationship. That is uh, the relationships that are formed here. Uh, and I think we should make sure that uh, that, that continues and, and, and technical support and social media can all be part of it. But it comes down to relationship. And yeah. I think it what comes down because the local church can't compete with events like this. That's I think, true. but we should get them involved in the local setting. Yeah, okay. That we should important. get them involved in, sure. in, in their, their, 
They're rearing to go here. They're all fired up and then they come home and there is nothing. So I think the local church, uh, the youth group they connect to, they should really get it get some activity going, get them involved in some sort of program or, or mm. something they, they can do together uh, to, to, to continue, that they fo keep, con keep continuing on that. that and that am mode. I also hearing, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but are you also making an appeal to the local church to give them the space and permission yes. to be involved? Ab absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. And so often that, that's where it stops, you know, because the local church Okay, every now and then they get an opportunity to present something on a local level. But I mean, they should have far more room in the local church to be themselves and to travel their own yes. spiritual journey within the church setting. Yes, sure. And often that is put down or people don't understand the importance or of it. Issues of change. I mean, you're also going to say. Uh, yes, I, I, I am very enthusiastic about giving young people responsibility in the local setting. Uh, you know, let them grow and take the responsibility so that, uh, you know, older people in the church, that they give actively room to young people yep. to be in a position of leading even yes. and in a, in a position of, uh, in a worship services that they are up front and they are included so that uh, eventually they can really take the responsibility yep. of the whole church uh, because as they, uh, you know, grow and so on uh, in knowledge and everything, that's a gradual process. But you have to start somewhere. So I, I was surprised. myself, yes, I was is, surprised yes. at the age of the presenters uh, yes. on the stage. Yes, yes, they were really young. Yeah. Some and, of them. and we need to share with our audience that uh, they're basically young teens. And Between, they did yeah. a 15 and excellent 18. job. Yes. So yeah. yeah, give them Noted. responsibility, yes. Yes. give them so even leadership positions yes. and trust in them and, yeah. and it will go well. The, the reality is, David, it is, we sometimes talk about our young people as the church of tomorrow. It's <laughs> nonsense. They are the church today. Oh, today they are yes. the church now. Yes. Yes. If we don't have them as the church now, they will not be here for any tomorrow. Yes. And we do have churches where for whatever reasons, the young people have just checked out. They've said, yeah, whatever, we're gone. Yeah. And if so we have to understand, change our mindset of saying, well, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow. They are the church today. They are the church now. <laughs> and so it's, it's not, I will even go a little further, not just involvement, let them take charge. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> let, and let them allow to make yes. their mistakes as yes. well. Yes. Okay. And also, I think one of the important things is also acceptance. You know, they leave, uh, need love and acceptance. And uh, if we are too picky on young people, how they dress or how they talk or how they do this and that, and we start, you know, um, putting judgment on young people. Yeah. So they, they think eventually that I have something else to yeah. do somewhere else where yeah. I'm accepted. Yeah. The church should be accepting community and welcoming community for young people. I want to be a little challenging. Um, uh, yeah. So go okay. on, Rob. Yeah. Well, on the, in a local because they come from a spiritual high and they go to the local churches, and often there are only a few young people. Uh, and uh, in in some areas in my country, uh, local churches don't have enough young people to form their own youth group, so they connect on a larger yes, uh, area, with other yeah. churches yeah. in the area. But that bonding within a local setting of young people together is so important. It's oh. so important. If they don't have friends in the church, yep. we will okay. lose them. Yeah. I want you to forgive my impatience. Mm -hmm. no. we, we've been around for a little while, yeah. okay? Yeah, we yeah. were having this very same conversation 30 to 40 years ago. Uh -huh. yeah, sure. Yeah. What have we got to do to move it forward? Yeah. I, will, I would say, and we can only appeal to, to to all of us as adults. But one of the things, and I've seen it here, where there is investment, there is also buy-in. So yeah. you have, a, and so this is not generational to say, oh, if you're an adult, you can't be here with the young people. And you were sharing at breakfast of one of your children who an adult administrator invested into your son's life mm -hmm. and determined the direction. And, and we as pastors know, 
when we've invested in a young person's yeah. life, that investment can be time, interest, concern. Yeah. You know, I've been invited to conduct weddings and, you know, I've kind of said, why are they inviting me? I left that church two decades ago. Yeah. But they're remembering yes. something I had forgotten, which was investment in them. Yeah. Not just saying, oh, how are you doing? But, but taking the time to sit, to chat. Yeah. And they say, so we're in a small church. Well, why don't we invest in our young people? As has happened here, where I've seen parents who are not, clearly too old for this kind of <laughs> stuff, but they've invested in their children and they've said, right, you're, I'll come. And they've kept a back seat, but they've brought their children here so that they can experience this thing. Uh -huh. It could be investment of driving your child to a, a, a group or whatever. And you sit in the car. Those kind of things are powerful investments. Yeah. Let, let us remember Ellen White's advice. I, I, you know, this famous quotation, I just partly quote it now, about mingling with people. So mingling with your young people, mm. knowing their needs. Yeah. yeah. So that is the good starting point. Mingle with your young people, listen carefully what they need. Excellent. Because we've, we, sorry, sorry, Rob. We've yeah. always regarded that as thinking about the young, people outside. Something going outside. So what about your young people? Mingling with them, knowing their needs, yeah. and then walking with them. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Rob? I'm so grateful I have children. <laughs> um, my, 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 my oldest will be 35 in a, in a couple of weeks, and our son is uh, 32, so uh, they're adults now, yeah. but, uh, but they keep me in touch with their world, you know? And it's so easy to be in our Adventist bubble. And I'm a pastor in the church. I've been a pastor for many years. I mean, to be honest, I don't have that many. I work for the church. I don't have that many contacts. Mm -hmm. It's my wife and it's my children that, mm -hmm. that help me to be in touch with society as such. Uh, and to have contacts outside of the church. And, but especially your children help you. Mm. And I try to, to keep an open mind and, and, to, to, uh, and because I learn a lot from them, you know, and through them, helping other young people. Sure. Uh, Good point. I appreciate that. It yeah. is true. They have opportunities and they connect with people better than we do at times because and, of the nature and, of our work. And to, to, be, to be honest and personal, uh, our daughter is very active in the church, married in the church. My son's not in the church. Uh, but we have, do have conversations about real life issues, you know? So yes. and as long as there's respect and you can listen to yes. one another, you can, you can share and you hear what, what people are dealing yes. with, what he's struggling with or how he views things, which helps me yeah. with other yeah. people as well, again, because I try to listen to what he, what he's saying, you know, and I know he's listening to seriously to what I have to offer. I myself uh, have to add a little bit because you told about your family. I have also two children and my son is here active in this organizing the media, actually works for the church youth ministry. And Mika, who is uh, here in the studio also sometimes discussing and doing program. So I'm uh, so proud what he has been doing. It is not my, uh, you know, you know, credit that uh, that has happened. It is his own choice that he has chosen to do that. But uh, it gives us uh, parents great joy if our yeah. children follow uh, our faith and uh, are committed to Christ. And, uh, and, uh, and I see good progress also in the area where he has been working. So I want that he could be another example also for other young people, yes. that yeah. there are opportunities in the church to work for the Lord and use your talents and, uh, and whether they're in music or art or as we have seen here or whether they are you know speaking and uh, presenting uh, they can be various talents that you can yeah. use in the church. And, and these so, young people have their own spiritual journey yes, to take have. and that might be different from the way yes. that I went right. but I still have to respect that because they are on their own journey and will find things out along the way, you know, that maybe happened to us in a different setting. Let's reinforce that. Involvement is critical, yes. but the way in which they want to be involved may not fit our box, yeah. you know, our, our, our expectation. Yeah. 
They may want to express God in a different way, their relationship with God. They may want, I say, Lord have mercy, they may even want to experience multi-sensory worship, which seems really way Not off for multi, me. Multi-sensory multi worship, okay. where you don't just worship with your head and your heart, but you want, to, you want the atmosphere as well. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, is, that is coming fast. Yeah, and yeah. some of our youngsters are into it, and they're saying, this is how we want to connect with yeah. God. Okay, and we've got a little bit of it in, the, in there, you know, yeah, the darkened yeah. room, the spotlights and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I'm not saying that is a, a vital factor, but that is the paradigm in which we're in. That's the culture in which they yeah. uh, connect with, yes. whether I like it or not. And yeah. so I'm almost wanted to say, can we give a little bit of wiggle room, holy wiggle room, right, <laughs> for them to express God in their own way? I, I would say yes. And I'll, I'll make a more controversial point that sometimes not every congregation is going to meet a person's needs. Yeah. Um, I heard a pastor say it, a very large church, Calvin Preston, West End Church, and he said his church, which was packed, said it's not for everybody. And what he meant by that is there were some people who will be turned off by the noise, the preaching, the, the thing. The style of music the that is dividing, etc. Yes. Yeah. I think that local congregations need to invest in their young people. And sometimes the investment is to say, you know what, let's create a space or let's show you a space in which you may be able to prosper. Not every congregation is going to meet every person's yeah. needs. Yeah. But I still contend that the investment in people and the investment in our young people, and it goes both ways, will lead to better results. Having said that, I, I think, and so we're used to see this in the British Union, that let's not guilt trip the adults either when our no, young people yeah. don't stay in the church. Yeah. You know, as I say to folk, so what did God do wrong that a third of his kids, yeah, angels, yeah. left yeah. the church? And look how bad they turned out. Mm. And some of us boast that, you know, well, if we keep them in the church, that means we did everything right. Yeah. So then the converse, what did God do wrong? Did he not invest in his <laughs> angels? You know, maybe he should have put on better AY programs or something. Or oh, even, you know? even Jesus who said, uh, will you also leave me? Because so many people yeah. left. Yeah. It's not yeah. just uh, that we are offering uh, some amusement or bread and brother. You know, people, when they run out, some people go away. Yeah. But, so, but, but, but. <laughs> Uh, maybe this is controversial, but uh, <laughs> but a lot of young people do leave the church. Yes. Yeah, that is. Uh, but mm. out of church is not out of God's heart. Understood very clearly. You know, and, uh, that, that's... we shouldn't equate the two. Sure. Yeah. And I think uh, David Asherick said it very clear. Maybe we move away from God, but God never moves yeah, away from us. us. Yeah. And I think that goes for our young people as well. And we should always remember that. Thank you. Uh, deeper than form and ceremony and style and worship and, and involvement, there is in our community of faith the issue of grace. And we're nervous of it still. Law, grace, law, grace. Yeah, and we always have a Bible study about that. Have it. <laughs> what can we do as church leaders to create a, a lasting grace awakening? Yeah. So that for our friends there, they always experience the colors of grace. Yes, yes. Every, you know, every moment of every day where they're in contact with their church family, their church family exhibits grace and lives grace. And every mother in Israel, every aunt, every uncle, every brother, every sister, it is just nothing but grace for them. Yes. And they catch it. Yes. What can we do as leaders to help create that environment? I would say as a local church pastor, um, you have a great strength because the pulpit, you know, if there's one thing we own in the church, it's the pulpit. Yeah. And for me, I, as a local church pastor, was very particular. I know what I believe. Yes. And I wanted speakers who also had an understanding of, of, of grace and grace law and, and so on. And, yes. and, that, and that's, that is a great and a constructive way of bringing folk to, to, to help understand that and educating the church. And, yes. and so it isn't just, oh, what am I going to preach on Sabbath? But taking the church, prayer meetings, whatever, through a program that helps lead them to understand and experience what grace is. And, and, and it can be 
it can be real challenging. You know, what is grace? What does it look like? When a young lady came to me at Newbold, as it happened, and I got myself involved in a local congregation, and she wanted to have an abortion. What does grace and law look like in that? Yes. You know, what I was talking about the thing, is it, oh, you're going to hell if you abort this child? What is grace? And those yes. are the kind of real things. And, yes. and what could I do? She had made the decision. I had to support her for her as a human being and a child of God. Yeah. Yes, I think we should speak about it. We should live about it. And uh, we should sing about it. So it should be in the center of Adventism, because Christ is the center of our message, God's love yeah. in Jesus Christ. And that is the greatest grace that we ever can get, is, uh, is that toward us on Galvary. Amen, so. amen. Rob? Yeah, I think we have to live it as well. Yeah. It's not just the words. And of course, you can't accept everything that people do. Yeah. Sometimes you have to take yeah. a stand. But even in that you can be gracious towards yeah. the person. And what you, and even what you said, yeah. sometimes people make choices that you don't agree with, but you have to be there for the person, and you have to be gracious towards yeah. the person. And, uh, and that's the challenge sometimes. You said just a moment ago that grace is beyond a definition, it's a person. So as I conclude this brief time together, I've really enjoyed it. I, I wish we could go on for hours, you know, <laughs> because, the, because yeah. well, these are issues really close to our hearts. Yeah. We've been on this journey. We're still trying to change the church for the better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a very, very long journey. Yes. You know, we, we feel called by God and we, we want to engage with people who want to go on that same journey and motivate them. But the bottom line is we're followers of Jesus. We're on this discipleship journey, still growing, all of us. Mm -hmm. We want to model that growth, personal growth of, of, of the journey of discipleship. But I want to end by asking you, what does Jesus mean to you? Let me start with you, Ian. Jesus means hope. And that the reality of who Jesus is, is that somebody messed up, as messed up as me, can be saved. It's not about what I do, but I can be saved. And, you know, one of the things I think you know this, David, as, as I read scripture, if you read it with the eyes of reality, you'll see that Christ Jesus is our hope and is our savior. And I, I read the scripture and I, you know, my life is not perfect. Oh, I mean, in the church, oh, no. God knows my stuff. And I read the scriptures and, you know, who do you want to take? A murderer of Moses, Noah who got drunk, you know, David, who clearly had too many women, his son, who had m way too many women, you know, and it goes on and on. And if God and Jesus can save them, I think he can save Sweeney yeah. too. That's not to take anything arrogantly or presumptuously, but Christ for me is a, he, he's just so gracious. He has the ability to save me from me <laughs> into him. Thank you. Rob? We're all on a journey. And uh, I think I, I, I'm, personally, I'm a pretty rational person. Uh, so I, I, I'm looking for truth and what the Bible says and what the Bible means. And, and as Adventists, of course, we have pretty strong opinions about things. Uh, but as I get older, for me, I've grown in, for me, Jesus, is the face of God, right? Uh, I mean, we can identify. Absolutely. God is pretty abstract, uh, you know, uh, it's difficult. But as I get older, it's, I come to the realization that who God is and the essence of God is love. Uh, and, 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 and what it is all about in our in our religious experience, our faith experience, is that we grow in that love. And that how we understand God, how we deal with people, love should be at the center of that. And that for me is becoming more and more, for me becomes more and more clear about who God is and what that means for me personally. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Aimer? Yes, um, of course, it would be easy to say he means everything for me. 
but to be more precise, I would say that uh, that uh, when I was a child, I I already learned to know Jesus, uh, and uh, from my home, my mother was uh, uh, teaching so much about you know love of God and and how good Jesus is to us. And then later on, uh, when I was a young person, I really met him personally. I mean, really personally. I don't have a time to tell the whole story, but but uh, but uh, that has carried me ever since that I gave my life to Jesus, Amen. and He still cares for me. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Ivo. I simply pray as we conclude that for our friends, the people yeah. we're called to serve, yeah. that their experience through our ministry and the ministry of the pastors and the elders and the, the leaders that we're, we're overseeing, they will see Jesus. Yeah. Yep. Grace, grace and more, and more grace. Yeah. And that grace is a person called Jesus. Yes. And may he be the great revival for yes. Adventism. And 30 to 40 years on, and some of us won't be here then. <laughs> we won't be going to Youth Congress in 40 no, years no, time, yeah. right? But over the next few years and decades, right? Should time last. We won't be having this conversation. Yeah. There will be a lasting and permanent revival. And let it be Jesus. Yes. Just Jesus all the way. Amen. Yeah. Let's pray, shall we? Thank you. Dear Lord, behind us right now are precious people who you've created in your image, who live in this world with all the pressure points they face. We ask your blessing on them. As they leave Congress, we ask for your spirit to go with them and remain with them and guide and direct and may they enjoy the pleasure of your company in their lives as they live that life with you living in them i want to thank you for the leaders around this table and i pray that you'll be with them in their ministry as they as people of influence for you share you encourage you and encourage your kingdom and build your kingdom here in the trans-european division and so, Lord, we put these matters in your hands. We pray for patience. But most of all, as we pray for patience, we pray for grace. We thank you for the grace in our own lives that you've given us. And we pray for grace in our church. May this be your will and through your spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you ever so much. Thank you, David. Thank you. We could go on and on. <laughs> and maybe we need to have more conversations like this. But I really appreciate your wisdom your experience and um, just moving the conversation forward yeah. and to you watching at home um, the, there will be more of uh, roundtable discussions like this I hope you've enjoyed the presentations we've been bringing from uh, Congress and uh, pray that uh, you too will live the story of grace the story of Jesus and that as it becomes real in your life and my life the contagiousness of that will affect the very people we're trying to minister to. Not just mingling out there, but as I most said, mingling internally as well. Thank you and thank you for watching. God bless. Bless.